Hi everyone, and today I'm going to show you some of the top tools and tricks for working with pictures within PowerPoint that will make your life easier. I bet there are a bunch of these that you've never even seen. Hi, my name is Camille Holden and I'm a PowerPoint expert and coach. I help busy professionals save hours and gain peace of mind by getting them to master the software that they use every day rather than letting the software be the master of them. Now, pictures are the backbone of most great presentations out there, right? That's why PowerPoint is rich with features and tools for working with them and having more options for what to do with them. Since it was released in 1987, PowerPoint has added tons of new features for working with pictures, but chances are that nobody's ever told you about them. That's why today I'm gonna to show you some of the most useful yet underappreciated tools and tricks for working with pictures in PowerPoint. Let's dive in. All right, so here in PowerPoint, we have a generic uh, presentation here that's open. And what might happen to you, and this is a pretty common situation, you wanna insert a picture and you wanna have it fill the entire slide. Well, most people would probably drag it and then drag it this way, and then you'd have to scroll down, you'd have to crop it manually, et cetera, et cetera. And that is not inherently a bad way of doing it, but there is a much faster way. So this presentation you'll notice is widescreen. It's in the 16 by nine format. So if I go up the picture tools, uh, the picture format tab up here in the ribbon and I go click on the downward facing arrow in the crop area, you'll notice I have an aspect ratio option. And what this does is allows you to, uh, it will PowerPoint will automatically crop an image down to fit a certain um, dimension. So uh, width by height. So uh, if I actually go in and select 16 by nine, I click it, PowerPoint will give me a preview. I can adjust. Uh, the image to fit within the bounds. I like to hold down the shift key so that it keeps everything locked into place horizontally or vertically. Um, so you can adjust this. Let's actually, let's put more of those bottom people in there. All right, if you hit, if you click away or hit escape, the crop will take and now you have your new picture that is cropped to exactly the dimensions of the slide. Now you can adjust it, uh, place it here if you want and then drag it open or you can just make it exact 13.33 and now it fills the entire slide and you can simply um, send it all the way to the back and now you have the semi-transparent shape here floating nicely over the image in the background. So that is tool number one. One is looking at the crop options, the aspect ratio being one of them in the crop drop down. Now, other options for cropping, um, let's just say we want to have this picture not only be uh, a circle, right? But we want it to be a, a complete circle, so not an oval. Uh, one thing we can do is very simply go to the picture format tab, select crop and if you go down to crop to shape it will actually crop the image into whatever shape you select you could even make it a smiley face if you wanted um, really all of these shapes are available to you um, but we're going to select a circle now you'll notice that it is not a perfect circle the height and width are not identical um, so one way to do that is just to go to the crop aspect ratio crop it to square and um, powerpoint will crop it so that its height and width are the same click away or escape and now you have a perfect circle. Uh, you can do the aspect ratio uh, thing before you turn it into a circle if you prefer. I typically like to do that. That way I know first for sure it's a square, then I turn it into a circle. Um, but that is another awesome option and you can move this to the side if you want to have it uh, bleed off the edge of the slide a little bit. So that is another amazing option you have available to you directly within PowerPoint. Uh, very easy to do, crop to shape, crop to aspect ratio, etc. Now, another thing you can do, if I control Z to undo, let's actually imagine we don't want this to be a circle, but we want the image to uh, fill up more space. So what a lot of people do is they drag the image uh, and they leave it like that. And we definitely don't wanna do that. We always wanna try to drag the edges here, the corners, so that the image doesn't warp, right? Especially with the face. I can imagine your boss wouldn't like to have his face stretched like this. So we definitely don't wanna just leave it like this. So if, if possible, drag this way, but then you're gonna have to crop, right, yourself. So if you drag it like this, this is totally uh, an option. What you can do then is go into the crop drop down and select uh, fill. What fill will do is it will do it your, itself for you. It will pull the image edges to fit the bounds that you determined um, and it will fit it uh, keeping the aspect ratio the same. So you can click away or hit escape and now your picture is no longer warped. Um, just so you know, if you were to select fill, 
uh, the opposite would happen. Sorry, fit. The, the opposite would happen. It would shrink, uh, shrink the image so that it, the entirety of the image fit within the bounds. Uh, and it will also keep the dimensions. So you'll end up with some, some blank space here, um, here on the side. So that's just another really awesome tool. I like to use the fill, um, to make images fit the shape that you, or the size that you determine. So that is tool number one, looking at the different crop options, and you have a ton here. I do want to point out, if you really need to get into the nitty gritty, uh, sometimes you need, to, uh, you need to crop to a certain dimension. You can easily go, if you click on the downward arrow here under size and click on the picture icon, there is a whole section of options here. You can crop to a very specific dimension. Maybe you want this picture to be, you know, 9.8 and you want to remove the one. You can just do that and it will adjust. It doesn't look like much happened because it was a tiny amount, but you can crop it just in small increments and be very precise here if you want to do that. Um, oops, sorry. Yeah, that's correct. Um, if you want to adjust the image within the crop position, you can also do it very precisely here by using, um, by using the, uh, the numbers. You can adjust it up or down based on the X and Y axes. So those are again some options for you here in the uh, crop options within PowerPoint. Now, another amazing feature within PowerPoint is the remove background command. So let's just say, for example, um, on this slide, we want the, um, maybe we want to have a background color and we want to make sure that the image uh, pulls the background. And may maybe the background is, you know what, maybe it's, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe it's a pattern, uh, which is maybe why we want that to come through and be behind the image. So um, the trick is obviously getting an image that has a, enough of a crisp background to be removed by PowerPoint. There are a lot of pictures where this might be tricky, like I've tried with this one. It's quite difficult because this person's white shirt, oops, kind of blends into the background. Um, this person here, we have some of the, the glare, the light here makes it really hard for PowerPoint to distinguish the background. So an image like this is a little bit easier. So if you select the image, go to picture format tab and select remove background. PowerPoint will guess, it will do its best at guessing for you. The magenta color is what will be removed. So just so you know, uh, that is what PowerPoint will then remove once you select keep changes or once you click away, right? If we click away, that's what happens. So uh, you can go back, you can either control Z to undo or go back to the picture and select remove background again. And it, and it keeps the, the, the settings and you can then adjust it. So there's a little plus and minus icons here. So we're going to tell PowerPoint what areas we want to keep. So I like to uh, do in a whole bunch here. I even try to go off of the image a little bit if possible. All right, let's just add all this back in, see what PowerPoint thinks. Okay, you let go and it re, re attempts it for you. It's not always the best. Oftentimes you have to do this a bunch of different times uh, to get it right. But the advantage is that you don't have to go into Photoshop. You don't even have to own Photoshop. You don't have to download a third party uh, program. So, okay, here we're getting a lot closer. Let's add her hand and elbow back in. Let's try that again. All right, so we're pretty close. I do want to just remove this tiny little white area here. Oh, so that changed things here. So let's go ahead and remove that again. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. You know, it won't necessarily always be perfect. Uh, if you have a product image that's really crisp on a white background, uh, then you can very easily remove the white background here. You know, we still have some little bits of white coming through it, but I think so far it's looking pretty good. So I'm going to select keep changes. And now you'll notice that the picture is still fully there, but the background was removed so that the uh, slide background can bleed through the image. So that is another really awesome feature from within PowerPoint to, um, to play around with your pictures and make them uh, stand out or behave in a way that is more suitable to your slide. Now the next tool, uh, comes back to this question of, you know, what if you want to make changes to this? Uh, if you've made all these edits to the picture and you want to go back. Well, uh, one option, obviously, for the remove background, you can go back to remove background and you can select discard all changes. That will bring the picture back to where it was. Um, or what you can do is go back to picture format and select um, reset picture. If you select reset picture, it will reset the image to what it was before. So, for example, I'll just control Z to undo that because I like 
like it with the background gone. For example, if I were to take this picture and if I were to, um, let's just say, add some uh, coloring, I'll make it black and white. Uh, maybe I will blur it for some reason. Okay, if we make some changes, this would be terrible. Let's say we don't want this, right? We wanna go back or someone sends you a presentation and there are things like this in there. What you can do is hit reset picture and it will reset the, uh, the image to what it was originally. Now it won't, do anything for cropping. So if you, for example, uh, you know, did some, some coloring to this, we added some effects, something like that, right? If you went to hit reset picture, it would reset the image, but if you go to crop, you'll notice that the rest of the image is still in here. So if you wanted to actually go back to the image to how it was originally, originally, right? So let's do that again, color and blurry, um, you would have to go click on this little arrow and select reset picture and size. What that does is it now brings the picture back to not only the uh, the colors and the, the original um, sort of options here get all removed that you added, it also brings the picture back to the entirety of it as it was inserted first into PowerPoint. So if you cropped anything, turn it into a circle, right, or any other shape, did things like that, um, the reset picture and size will reset the picture to that exact um, original image. So that is another really helpful tool. Now keep in mind, if you save this presentation, if you compress it, which I'll show you about in a minute, if you compress it and remove the cropped um, bounds, um, then you know there are only so many times that reset will work because PowerPoint will just save the image as it is and it may not save all the original aspects of the image. So do keep that in mind. It's not a, a fail safe, uh, but it's a really good place to start if you need to get the picture back to its original uh, dimensions. Okay, so the next trick is the picture layout command. So let's just say you have a slide with the team uh, that's gonna be there. This is the executive team. Um, there is a very handy way for making these photos all fit nicely. Let's say we, we just want their portrait, we don't need the full body. Now chances are you won't have these nice, crisp, semi-transparent images, but even with ones with the background where they're all a little different, this will make it look a lot better. Um, the, what you can do now, instead of dragging it, cropping it, making sure, and then they'll all end up being a slightly different size, slightly different dimensions, and then you're you're fiddling with it, just let PowerPoint do it for you. So select all three pictures, and if you go into the picture format tab, you have this picture layout option. And this looks a lot like SmartArt, and that's because it is. Um, this will essentially uh, throw the images into a SmartArt picture layout, and you can kind of select any one. I like to go with this one because it makes them all the same sort of a square square size. Um, so I'm just going to select picture lineup. Now you're going to think, okay, well, what do I do with this? Well, the first step is to convert it to shapes. You can um, ungroup it. So control shift G to ungroup or convert to shapes, whatever you prefer using. Convert to shapes will now turn this out of SmartArt. You'll notice the SmartArt tab is gone and these are just shapes uh, and shapes with pictures in them. So again, we're going to control shift G to ungroup it another time, or you can right click group and ungroup, right? Uh, now that these are all ungrouped, if I hold shift and deselect the picture, Pictures, right? Oops, I'm just going to deselect those, hit delete so I can delete all the other elements that were there. There was probably a line and some weird shapes, right? We just want the images. If I now then go and I remove the outline, right? No outline. They are now exactly the same um, size and dimensions and now they're very, very easy to work with. So I can shrink them down, for example, hold the shift key, remember, because otherwise they're going to warp. So I'm going to hold the shift key. Now, obviously, um, you don't want to have these pictures just be their, <laughs> their uh, midsections. So I'm using my smart guides, by the way, here to help me place these. Um, so now you just go into the picture format tab, select crop, and then you can drag. I'm holding the shift key again to drag this so that it stays perfectly aligned. We're going to drag her down as well. And we're going to do that for each one of these. There we go. Now um, you'll notice there her face seems to be a little bit larger than the other ones. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually, I prefer hers. So I'm just going to select these white or gray little circles outside of the crop area. And I'm going to drag them to resize them so that um, his, his dimensions are actually bigger. I'm going to do that for her as well. Whoops. Let's do that again. Picture format tab crop. And I'm going to increase her size. There we go, that's looking a bit better. I can make her maybe a little smaller. So you can do the same thing. And because the background is transparent, it doesn't really matter that the image uh, fits or doesn't fit fully within the cropped bounds. 
because it's all transparent. Anyway, I'm going to make him a little bit bigger. And there you go. That's a very, very easy way for PowerPoint to do most of the heavy lifting for you. It's made everything the same size and dimensions. So it's really easy to then go back in oops, and crop everything down. I don't want to cut his head off. There we go. So uh, that is, again, another really awesome PowerPoint tool for taking pictures and really quickly making them the same shape, size, dimension, etc. Now, the final thing I want to show with you today is the compress feature. So if you're using a lot of pictures in PowerPoint, uh, you will often find, especially if you're using high quality ones, that your file size will be really, really big. In today's world, emailing and uh, you know saving to drives is a lot better. So we don't necessarily need to get the same tiny file size that we used to get, but there still may be a situation where your file is too big. What do you do in that situation? What I like to do is I go to the picture format tab and I just use a, a tool that's built into PowerPoint already. And that tool is the compress pictures command. So if you click on it, you get a bunch of different options. Um, I typically like to use email because this is how I'm sending my presentations. You have more options if you need uh, something in between. The high fidelity will obviously be the highest possible resolution uh, and default will often be very low. But I like to just select the lowest one because this is something I'm going to email to someone. They're just gonna open it on their laptop. It doesn't need to be um, super, super high quality. And then you can choose whether you apply it only to this picture. So that means that um, only this image will be compressed. If you unselect it, it means all the images in your presentation will be compressed. Now keep in mind that will also compress any logos that you might have and you may or may not want the logos to be compressed. So just be aware of that because if you compress the images, uh, the logo and it starts to get all blurry, that's definitely something you want to avoid. So just keep that in mind, decide uh, if that's something you want to do or not. And then you can choose to delete cropped areas of the pictures or not. If you um, select this, this means, and I'm going to hit OK, I'll show you what this means. Now when I go to hit crop, there's nothing else in this picture because I've told PowerPoint, remove all the areas that have been cropped out. So there literally will be no more uh, of her body that you can use to readjust her size. So if I control Z to undo, now go back to crop, you'll notice the rest of her is there. So that's just something to keep in mind. If you do delete the cropped areas of pictures, um, which I recommend doing if you really need to get down to a very small file size, because um, it does remove more of the picture and, and reduces the file size quite a bit, uh, do only do it at the very, very end when you're sure 100% of your presentation. You're sure that it's complete, that it's finished, the design is exactly how you want it. You could even consider keeping uh, a file next to or a folder uh, that lives near this presentation where you save those original images so that if for any reason uh, you need to go back to them, they do exist somewhere else out of this presentation. Now, I'm going to uh, do that again, and I'm going to select email, apply to all of the pictures, and delete the cropped area. I'll say OK. And now let me quickly show you uh, what the file size is. So currently, the file size is, you'll notice here, 12 megabytes, right? So if I go back, whoops, if I go back to my presentation and I hit Save, Control S to save, and I go back to my file, you'll notice it is now four megabytes. So it was cut by a third. So it really, really makes a difference um, what you choose to do uh, and, and really makes a difference if you compress and remove background and, um, I'm sorry, remove cropped areas, et cetera. So this is a tool that's just built into PowerPoint. It makes it really, really easy to compress your images and uh, to reduce the file size of your presentation. So those are some of the top tools and tricks for working with pictures within PowerPoint. There are a ton more features and commands, so feel free to dive into the picture tools format tab and other elements of the ribbon to see what else is available with pictures. Now, if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, let me know you liked it. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to chat in the discussion area down below. I answer all comments and questions. I would love to know your thoughts. Also, feel free to head on over to the ASAP YouTube channel for more videos like these, and feel free to hop on over to my YouTube channel at Nuts and Bolts Speed Training. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.